Hi, my name is uh, John Ng. I'm a product manager for the uh, Nexus Solutions team as part of the uh, data center group in Cisco Systems. So um, today what I'm going to be talking about is how to automate your Nexus switching. And basically what we're going to be focusing on is how to perform workload automation in your private cloud. So that's the focus of today's session. And when I say workload automation, basically workload is anything that's either a physical or virtual host running a specific application that you would like to bring online. Today, a lot of the things that you're doing is manually. So we hear a lot of people today talking about how to do the scripting. So we're going to show you some RESTful APIs that we provide as well so you could do it. So you could automate this either through RESTful APIs or through OpenStack or you can manually provision the auto configuration profiles. And then as workloads come up, it could be automatically deployed. And so that's what the focus of today's uh, talk is going to be. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the challenges in the data center. So first of all is manual provisioning. So we all know manual provisioning is bad, especially when you're trying to bring up a workload. If you have to go to each one of your f switches and actually add in a physical VLAN, that's going to be a very difficult task. I guarantee you that there's going to be mistakes that's going to be made every time you have to bring up a workload and you have to go through so many provisioning of all the different switches. Not because of anything to do with you guys. It's just because we're all human. We all make mistakes. So therefore, automation is much more easier to do in this case and less tedious. Other things in the data center challenges today is the increase in east-west traffic. No longer are you just making a single request into the data center and just getting a reply. Every time you go and make a request into the data center today, there's a ping-ponging effect, the east-west type of traffic that goes on. When you go to Amazon, for example, and you go and purchase a camera, the first thing they'll do is the request goes in, and there's a huge amount of lookup that goes back and forth, and you get display of different uh, camera bags, different lenses, filters that goes with this camera that they like to sell to you. And all these are generating a lot of east-west traffic that's happening in the data center today. Lack of fabric visibility. Everybody's going to virtualization. But one of the key problems that people have today is, actually, where is my virtual machines? They like to deploy it, but they can't figure out where it is. Unlike physical hosts in the past where you bolt it down, they never move. If it's here, it's going to be here tomorrow. But today, with the load balancing, with all the things that's happening in the virtual world, you could be v-motioning data virtual machine from one place to another. So today, your, data, your virtual machine could be here. Tomorrow, it could be in this part of the network. So the lack of visibility into this is causing a lot of problems uh, for a lot of the uh, data center admins today. Then also scale challenges. You want to be able to grow your network as you need to. Small, start small with a few pods and then be able to grow. You don't want to be land bound in any way. So that when you, as you grow, your business grows, your infrastructure will grow with it. And then the static resource allocation. Static resource allocation is a key problem that we have. If you have to use, let's just say, a VLAN 10 only on a specific pod, but in order to satisfy vMotion, if you have to statically allocate it across all your entire um, data center network, that's going to be a problem. Okay? That's not making very good use of VLAN 10 because this part of the network does not need to use it. Instead, what we want to do is be able to allocate this information dynamically. As we need it, we want to dynamically allocate it. And when we don't need it, we want to be able to uh, clean up and um, just throw back into the pool as we need. So all these things have led to a lot of operational complexity. How am I going to figure this out about static uh, resource allocation, making sure that my infrastructure is efficiently used, and also making sure that in terms of how I'm going to grow my network is dynamic. So with the Unified Fabric innovation, and Unified Fabric, when we talk about Unified Fabric, it's basically all of the Nexus platforms that you see in Cisco today. This is the Nexus 2K, the 5K, the 6K, the 7K. That's you have in your platform, OK? Also the 9K. So what we want to be able to do is provide visibility into the fabric of exactly where our workloads are, be able to provide flexibility in the placement of these workloads, 
anywhere in your network. So no longer, um, you know, uh, subnet 10 is over here, so therefore I cannot use it on this direction, over here in this pod. Because the resources available here, the servers are sitting idle, I want to be able to move that VLAN, uh, VLAN 10 or subnet 10 over here on demand and be able to you know, bring up workloads immediately. And then being able to do this for virtualized as well as non-virtualized, no matter if it's bare metal machines or virtual machines, we want to be able to be, uh, provide the same level of automation for it. And then also being able to orchestrate this. Everybody's talking about orchestrators today. But a lot of people, you know, they have their own favors. Uh, you know, some people like uh, vCloud directors, some people like UCS directors, some people like OpenStack. The solution we're going to provide today allows you to work with any of those orchestrators or allows you to provide the API so you can build your own. That's what we provide for you as part of the unified fabric innovation that we're going to be discussing. So some of the uh, customer use cases that we have for workload automation is basically is reducing the uh, workload deployment time. Being able to bring up a workload instantaneously from you know, weeks to minutes, that's what we want to achieve. Also, we mentioned earlier, the flexibility of placing workload anywhere you want in the network, that's what we want to be able to do. Utilizing resources, that's idle. And then eliminate static provisioning and cleanup. So we no longer want to be able or need to uh, provision VLANs statically across all the boxes, even when we don't need it. We want to do it on demand. When you need VLAN 20, I allocate you VLAN 20. When it's no longer in use, it wants to be able to clean up after itself. And that's the key point. It's actually the, the most important part is not just about the creation. It's about the cleanup. When you go and you have a switch and you're using VLAN 10, 20, 30, and you're running out of VLANs, when those VLANs are no longer in use because the VM has been retired, guess what happens? It just sits there idle. Your configuration grows. What you want to do is, if you were to do it manually, and you accidentally remove the wrong VLAN, you're going to be taking out a critical workload. That's in the middle of a transaction. Now you're going to have to figure out, how am I going to roll back the data? You know, database is corrupted because autom somehow I just cut it in the middle of the transaction. You don't want to do that. Instead, you want the, uh, the ability for the switch to figure that out themselves, that, hey, that VLAN is no longer needed. Let's throw it back into the pool. And that's what we provide for you here. It's not just about the creation. It's about the cleanup. And the cleanup is more important. Because when the party's over, no one wants to be there to do cleanup. Everybody's there very happy when they bring up the database, the new web services. We all know that. But it's the cleanup that's the hard part. And that's what we provide for you here. And then open integration of different orchestration tools. As I mentioned, the solution we provide here will work with OpenStack. We'll work with any version of the OpenStack, as a matter of fact. If you're using Juno, if you're using Grizzly or Havana, whichever version, it will work for it. It will also, if you're an enterprise shop and you want to use UCSD, it will also work for that as well. Or you could roll your own by using the APIs that we're going to provide. So first, you know, we've got a couple of different things that we want to go over and what they are. So as an orchestrator, so we have basically the UCS director that sits on top. What we have here is these little nice little icons are basically virtual machines. Nexus 1KV or the OVS, depending on the uh, uh, hypervisor that you use. And then that icon up there is the physical servers. And then we also have the uh, DCNM, which is our prime Cisco Prime Data Center Network Manager, which acts as a central point of management. And what does that mean? That means that's where we store all the configuration profiles that you could either enter manually or through OpenStack, automatically deploy it there, or configure it there, or you could run a script, a Python script, and using our RESTful APIs to interface with our central point of management, the DCNM application, and interface into it to create that profile. 
what are the different things that happen? So when a workload comes up, either through using the virtual machines, a VDP protocol, a virtual discovery protocol, sends up to the switch themselves to say that, hey, a workload just come up. Or through physical machines, we have Mac learning. So when you get a ARP request, I know a physical machine's there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger a configuration profile to be downloaded to the switch. And I'm going to go over that in sequence in a minute. So here, using workload automation, leveraging the VDP protocol, what we have is an a person sitting there on the orchestrator of your choice. When we first start off a virtual machine, the first thing we need to do in OpenStack or any of those uh, UCS director is to create an organization. Then what we're going to do is create a network. And then when we create a virtual machine, we have to bind it to a specific network. Oops. OK. So, oops, sorry. All right. So that's what we're going to be showing. The first thing we do is we create an organization. In today's lab, we're going to create one that's going to be Cisco Live Milan. That's our organization. Then what we need to do is create a fabric, and the orchestrator will push this information over to the fabric management. That's our DCNM. That's what I'm going to show you later. And then at the same time, it pushes this information down to the virtual switch, the OVS, or the Nexus 1KV. Then as a workload comes up, we have to bind it to a specific network. So here, we have the red network. A virtual machine that came up in the red network. And we basically call out specifically for the segment ID that we previously pushed over to the, um, to the fabric management, which is the central point of management, the DCNM. So we query for this information based on that segment ID, because when we created that virtual machine, we select which network it is. And that network red correspond to that segment ID using a value. At that point, what we do is we pull the information down to the physical switch to configure the SVI, to configure the VLANs, and any other parameters that we would like to have. That gets what puts down, pulled down into the configuration. So, when you do that, the VLAN ID that you're using for your virtual machine gets automatically bind to this configuration. And as you move your VM, when you're doing a migration, guess what happens? Exactly the same thing. The configuration gets pulled down into the switch. So therefore, on demand, as you need the configuration, is when you apply it to the physical switch himself. No longer do you need to put it here, 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 here before any virtual machine comes up. And that's what everybody does nowadays. When talking to the customer, I say, hey, how do you deploy your workloads? Well, you know, we have these VLANs and we just spread it across all the physical switches. I say, why do you want to do that? Well, it's because, you know, we don't know how our workload's going to move from one place to another. If it needs to move from one place to another, we have to have that VLAN ready. I said, well, that's not very good use of your resource. He goes, yeah, but that's the best we have. So I introduced them to this, and they absolutely love it. OK? Because now, on demand, they get this configuration. OK? So, and then the best part is, as I mentioned, when the configuration, because the workload, red workload is no longer there, it gets removed. Because there was two workloads. There was the red and the blue. If I have to do this manually, more than likely, myself, I know for sure, I will make some mistakes. I will either remove not the full complete configuration, or I might accidentally you know, take out the wrong VLAN, and then therefore my blue network uh, my blue, blue workload, which is a critical workload, would go away. So in terms of creating profile, this right here is what we have. This is DCNM. This is the configuration profile that I mentioned. So what happens is, 
if you go into DCNM and you click on add, adding a configuration profile, I don't know if there's a, I don't think there's a little pointer there, so I have to use my finger. So creating a profile, there's that little add button. Or you, a edit button so you can modify. Okay? So here what we did was we created an organization. This could be done either through OpenStack or manually. Manually, you just press that add button. And you create the Cloud 28, and then you create the organization and partition. Then what you do is you could create a network as a step two in preparation for your workload to come up. All this is being done on a central point of management, the DCNM. Nothing has been configured onto the box itself, the physical switches. This information either you could add manually yourself or through OpenStack. And then you define which profile that you would like to have. Then as you go on, you could see if I want to add additional network, the star, so it's just for mandatory fields, you would create the different partition and you add additional network. Because in one organization, you're going to have multiple networks. So this is just a way to show you manually how you would go about doing it. In terms of the profile itself, this is what gets sent down to the switch along with the associated values. And how does this value get populated? Again, either manually or through OpenStack or through RESTful APIs that I'm going to show you in a minute. DCNM and RESTful APIs. So how do we go about doing this? So you authenticate with the server first on slash log on using a post method. All the RESTful APIs that we have are in JSON format. So the API, what you do is you first, you get authenticated. And once you do that, you get a token back. And that token is what you're going to be using to interface with DCNM if you want to use a Python script and you want to do it yourself. Okay? From there, you use that token. And what you could do, the different operation, you could update profiles, you could create profiles, you could delete profiles, or retrieve the information. Here are the different primitives that you have that you could use. As you can see, you could do the post, the get, and the delete. If you want more information about it, there's this nice little link on the bottom that will give you all the different things you could do and a programmer's guide of how to do it manually yourself. But you don't have to. You could do it yourself programmatically, or you could use our GUI, our UCSD, and do all those things automatically with an easy button. Here is just a Python script that we have using Python 2.79. That's all you need to download into your Windows machine or your Mac. You could download uh, Python 2.79. And you could run this basic uh, script. And this will allow you to create and also to print out some uh, the profiles that's in your DCNM. And we also have other sample codes in our portal, in our GitHub portal. So this is just a continuation of the Python script. Here, what we're doing is we're just displaying the different organization that we have configured inside our DCNM. Now, the last 10 minutes, what I want to do is do a demo. So what I'm showing you here is basically our DCNM, our central point of management. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log on first. Oops. And what I'm going to show is basically the auto configuration, which I showed you a minute ago. So here are the different configuration in my profile. As I mentioned earlier, I created a Cisco Live Milan. That's the organization. As you can see right here, there's no network right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into OpenStack. I'm going to create myself a network, a red net one. And then I'm going to create the instance on top of that. So here we go. So we go into OpenStack. This is Horizon. For those of you who don't know much about Horizon, this is the OpenStack for Horizon and using the Juno base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do admin, Cisco 123. OK. And what I'm going to do, oops, sorry. I'm going to get in as red network is what I want to do. Red admin. 123. OK. So I'm going to go in here. 
and I'm going to the pro the organization Cisco Live Milan inside that project what I want to do is I want to create a network so what I'm going to do is create and I'm going to say red net one subnet I'm going to make up some uh, let's just say uh, 180.80.10.0 slash 24. Default gateway, they're just going to select one. Details, OK. Then we create a network called RedNet1. So if I go back to DCNM, which over here, You can see that DCNM has created RedNet1. This information is being pushed down from OpenStack down to our central point of management. Okay? So, what I want to show also at the same time is if you take a look, okay, and I want to show you this is basically what our topology looks like. We have two, two spines and two leaves that we're using. So I'm going to show the two spy, the two leaves, okay? Which is hold on. Using putty. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, leaf one. Admin. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Show EVB host. So basically, I have nothing here as well as leave two admin. Let's go one, two, three. Cisco one, two, three. Okay. Show EVB host. Okay. So Basically, these two have not in, uh, do not have any hosts in it, okay, at all. So next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and launch myself, go into compute of Juno release of OpenStack, and I'm going to create myself launch an instance, okay. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create red VM1 source boot from image. Then what I'm going to do is Cirrus. OK? Then from the networking aspect, you can see that I've selected RedNet1. OK? So that's what's going to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a launch of this virtual machine. As you can see, it's building right here. Now, when I build and work uh, a virtual machine, I really don't know which of these two leaves that the compute is going to use. I, I don't know if it's off of leaf one or off of leaf two. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is actually finding out where your virtual machines are. So I'm going to go into DCNM. I'm going to look for the virtual name of red VM1, OK? I'm going to hit, return. And guess what? It tells me. It tells me that it's off of leaf one right here, leaf one. And so therefore, that's what I showed you earlier here. It's leaf one and leaf two. Here's leaf two. So let's move that across. Leaf one. If I do a show EVB host, which is our command, we see that red, net, red VM1 has just been created automatically, just like that. So what we showed you is the creation. So let's see. Show running interface VLAN. 3,000 span profile. This configuration has just been downloaded. Cisco Live Milan has been the verf. We got the IP address of 180.80.80.10.1 as our DHCP server. All that information has been created. If I show more, show database, show fabric. database, host, VNI, of that number up here, 
415. 415. I could show that this is the profile that got downloaded, the information. OK? So you will see that this information is there because that uh, red VM1 was allocated. Now, if I go back okay, to OpenStack and I say, hey, you know what? I'm finished with this workload, OK? I'm done. So what I want to do is terminate this VM. I terminate it because it's no longer needed. If I go into DCNM at this point and I look for the same thing and see, hey, let's find out where my red VM1 is. I hit return, guess what? Nothing. Can't find VM. So if I hit detail, no match because it's gone. So if I go back, OK, to my switch at this point, and I do a show fabric host VNI, guess what? It's counting down 20 seconds here, OK? This profile is going to be removed. This is what I was talking about, automatic cleanup. This is what it's doing. So if I go and do it again, OK, zero seconds. Right up here, zero seconds. That means, OK, the next time I issue this command, this configuration profile is not going to be there anymore. So if I go, quit, I give this command again, boom, it's gone. It cleaned up after itself, automatically. OK? It's not actually no magic. It's part of the Cisco Nexus innovation. So here, if I go and do show running interface VLAN that we previously created, guess what? When I hit return, it's going to error. It's not going to show the VLAN anymore. It's because it doesn't exist anymore. We clean up. There you go. OK? So what we showed you is automatic allocation resources on demand as you need it. Using DCNM, we can figure out exactly where that VM is, OK? Giving you fabric visibility of where your workloads are. And then third is being able to clean up after itself when it's no longer needed. And those are the critical things that are faces, uh, challenges that people are facing today. So with that, I end the uh, demo. And back to here, if you want more information, please go here. And you can do, go to the Cisco GoDFA site, cisco.com, GoDFA. Fantastic. Thank you.